Hi everyone, welcome to lesson 13 called Adoption. Uh, this is a great lesson, love it. Uh, in fact, the, the big idea for this lesson is, this is what I wrote. I like to summarize the, each lesson with a big idea. And for me, I wrote, the impossible has happened. The almighty God of the universe knows me and has adopted me as his child and made me his heir. Uh, the key verse for this lesson is Romans 8, 15 to 16. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received has or the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Incredible, incredible truth. Uh, the core truth. I want to uh, just highlight a, a few of the words and phrases that stood out. Uh, first of all, highest privilege. And I just thought, you know, this is more, this whole adoption thing is more than a big deal. It's the greatest deal, right? It's the highest privilege. Uh, and just the word adoption itself, become God's child. And I was talking with our group about this. I said, you know, a friend of mine, um, ad adopted a child uh, recently, and uh, they already have uh, several kids, but this new child is now part of their family. This new child is now uh, part of the, the family will and uh, is, uh, will, will receive you know, the percentage of um, uh, anything that the other children will receive like this this child was not part of their family and now is i mean it's you know in in some ways it's like yeah that's what adoption is but that's mind blowing i mean, uh, they've altered for good the 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 trajectory of this child's life i mean that's incredible we have been adopted into god's family that's a big deal and uh then i love the phrase Eternal family, right? Adopted adoption as children into God's eternal family. Eternal family. That means never ending. That means once I'm adopted, I'm in. That's significant. And then in that section, core truth number three, what questions or issues does the core truth raise for you? I just wrote, why am I not more overwhelmed by how incredible this is? Now, you're probably hearing it in my voice now because it is incredible, but I want to think about this throughout the day. I need to discipline myself <laughs> to do that and realize, oh my goodness, like, I am God's child. Yeah, that, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, so then the memory verse study guide, focusing on the Romans 8, 12 to 17 Question three, how does being a child of God negate our former slavery to, to fear? I wrote, we don't have to prove our value or earn our love. There's no longer fear that we won't be accepted or approved because an adopted child can have confidence in God's love and approval. That's an incredibly freeing. I really, I really am grateful for that. And then question number six, when have you experienced a little of what it feels to be God's child? And I, I wrote in two ways. One, answers to prayer. And I didn't have anything specific in mind, but just in general, you know, an answer to prayer is just a reminder that, that God is with me. But then I also wrote uh, when I'm overwhelmed or when I'm dealing with depression. Uh, it's just a good reminder in the midst of chaos or frustration that, okay, you know, God's still here. And I told the guys in my group, this goes back years ago. Uh, I, I remember waking up one day. It was just one of those days where I did not want to get out of bed and, uh, you know, just was going in a, ne a mentally negative spiral down and in the midst of that I realized 
God's still with me. God still loves me. It was just a little slice of that in the midst of all that I was thinking and feeling. But that wouldn't go away. I knew that God was with me. I knew that God loved me. And that's, that's a blessing. That's an incredible blessing. The inductive Bible study guide looking at Galatians 3, 26 to 4, 7. Uh, let me read you these first verses from chapter 3, uh, 26 to, to 29. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. This is key. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there a male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And I mention that because there's a terrific quote from a book I love, and I encourage you to, to pick it up, to read it, to listen to it. It's the book called Nudge by Leonard Sweet. And in that he writes, Every good Jewish male soaked himself daily in this antibacterial prayer. Lord, I thank thee that I was not born female, Greek, nor slave. And then he writes, this verse is Jesus' response to that prayer, um, according to the Apostle Paul. You know, that there's neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male or female, we're all one in Christ Jesus. So that was just contradicting that mindset, that other mindset of uh, superiority uh, based on you know, gender or uh, identity, etc. And he's like, no, no, no. In Christ, we are all one. So I, I, I love that. And the reading uh, called Abba's Child, great section. The uh, last, let's see, the last line in the third paragraph, I highlighted this. Our highest privilege and deepest need is to experience the Holy God as our loving Father, to approach Him without fear, and to be assured of his fatherly care and concern. Just think about that. If you and I and everyone we knew really grasped that, uh, the fatherly care and concern that we have in God, that that's available to us. I mean, that, that would change the way we think, change the way we speak, change the way we act. And the next section, God and our earthly fathers. And I appreciated that the author put this in here because I think a lot of People struggle with, uh, well, I, you know, I, I don't want to think of God as Father because my God abandoned me, or my God, I, I'm sorry, my, my father abandoned me, or my father abused me. Um, and we can have a hard time then connecting or uh, viewing God, the, the uh, Father, as Father. Uh, and, and he talks about that. But he writes at the, the very end of that section, God is a father who is faithful in love and care, generous and thoughtful, and interested in all we do, skillful in training, wise in guidance, always available, helpful in teaching us maturity and integrity, no matter what our earthly what our earthly fathers were like. So that's just a reminder that, look, regardless, uh, hopefully we've had some positive experiences with earthly parents, but regardless, it doesn't change who God is and how he is there for, for us. The next section, our dad, it talks about the term Abba Father. Uh, Abba is an Aramaic word that expresses an intimate family relationship, a word used by completely trusting and dependent child wholly secure in the loving arms of a father. Um, the, the author mentions an Old Testament scholar who searched li literature leading up to New Testament times to see if anyone in all the literature had dared to address God in such a familiar term and he could find no other usage. Uh, this is significant. I mean, first of all, <clears throat> Jews wouldn't even uh, use the, the name of God. They wouldn't even write out the name of God. In fact, today, if you have Jewish friends, uh, 
they would write probably G dash D uh, out of respect because God's name is so holy that they don't want to mistreat it, misspell it, misuse it in any way. Uh, but here we, we have uh, God the Father being referenced as, as Abba, that we're invited to cry out, uh, Abba, Father. Uh, in fact, Jesus modeled that for us. Uh, the author writes, it would have been scandalous to address the Holy One this way. I had the, the privilege to visit Israel in the last few years, and uh, one fun memory for me on that trip was my wife and I and, and several others were just kind of standing in um, you know, a, a city center area, just waiting for someone or something to happen, I don't recall. But just off to our side, there was um, a young family, and uh, you could tell that they were getting ready to, to say goodbye. It was a, a mom, a dad, and a little girl. And uh, the dad was going somewhere. So he hugged and kissed his wife, hugged and kissed his daughter, turned and walked away. The daughter just looked at, at him as he walked away and then just started taking steps towards him crying out Abba Abba and that's when I thought that's it like, it's that kind of relationship that God wants to have with us that he invites us to, to be in with him where we can speak to him in that intimate level that dependent level so let's 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 do that then the last section of that writing called our rich inheritance uh, the second sentence in that section says, if we are full-fledged members of the family, there is an inheritance waiting for us. In quotes Romans 8, 17, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Uh, that's mind-blowing. Yeah, that, that we, first of all, be heirs, with, with, with heirs of God and as a result, co-heirs with, with Christ. There's a, a verse in, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Uh, so what does it mean, every spiritual blessing in, in Christ? Well, that really covers the whole scope of God's saving work in Christ. So that includes our adoption to sonship, our redemption, our forgiveness, our sealing uh, with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, of, cor of course, the author uh, also mentions that we'll inherit such things as resurrection bodies that don't decay, a new heaven, new earth, uh, a, a family to spend eternity with, uh, free of pain, crying, disease, death. Uh, we are co heirs with Christ to, to receive that. So have a terrific. Uh, lesson, discussion, time of prayer, encouragement. Um, be sure to ask lots of questions and to listen and um, to encourage one another to follow up with, with each other during the week. I remind your groups to keep reviewing those verses. Review, review, review. Those are the three keys to, uh, to, to memorizing Bible verses. Uh, so have a great lesson. Take care.